as you've probably guessed, my favourite topic in the Linux world is Wayland. But my second favourite, even though I don't talk about it that often, is Systemd. Not because I love or hate Systemd, solely because there are a lot of people out there who have completely irrational feelings about it, whether that's in favour or against it, and it always makes for a very amusing comment section. And I'm sure today is going to be absolutely no different. Now I know I'm late to this, but I'm always late to things, but here is a post from everyone's favourite developer, Lenart Pottering. This thread is about a replacement to sudo, making that replacement a component of system D. I'm pretty sure that all of you are well aware of the venerable sudo tool that is a key component of most Linux distributions for a long time. At the surface, it's a tool that allows an unprivileged user to acquire privileges temporarily from within their existing login sessions for just one command or maybe for a subshell. Sudo is very, very useful as it allows users to operate at minimum privilege, do most of their work without privileges, but temporarily acquire them when needed all without leaving the shell workflow integratable with shell scripts, pipelines, and so on. Nobody is going to disagree with that. That is a pretty straightforward explanation of what sudo does. Now, some people might disagree about using it in shell scripts, for example, but that, for the most part, is a normal explanation. But, obviously, there is going to be a lot more to this. Sudo has serious problems, though. It's a relatively large SUID binary, i.e., Privilege code that unprivileged users can invoke from their own context. Now, relatively large is certainly a way to describe sudo. I would call it a bit more than relatively large, but SUID binary is the important part there. So SUID stands for set owner user ID upon execution. Now, there are some missing letters in there. I know. Ignore that. What this does is when an SUID binary is executed, it will execute with the privileges of the owner user. This is what it's supposed to do. This is the intended behavior. And there's supposed to be protections in place to make it so unintended users are not able to get this privilege in the form of a privilege escalation. Because when that happens, you might see cases where users who aren't supposed to have it have access to the root. And there have been a number of cases in the past where exactly this has happened. 2023, 22809, 2021, 3156 for two recent examples. But these are by no means the only time that has happened. Also, it has a complicated configuration language. Now, there are tools like sudo edit to make it so when you modify your sudo as file, it doesn't end up completely balked. It'll tell you what syntax problems it has but it doesn't help you writing a sudo as file that actually does something useful. It also has loadable plugins. Every time you have plugins, you are running additional code. When you're running additional code, especially random third-party code that probably hasn't been audited, you are increasing your security risk. Hostname matches, and so on, and so on. The hostname matches part, I had to look up and find out what that was about. If you look up sudo hostname matches, you will find tons and tons of people running across issues where sudo is just saying that their hostname doesn't exist and they have no idea what's going on. This has led various people to revisit the problem and come up with alternatives. Most prominently, there's OpenBSD's do as. While it greatly simplifies the tool and removes much of the attack surface, it doesn't change one key thing. It's still an SUID binary. For reference, OpenBSD does still provide a sudo package if sudo, for whatever reason, is the thing that you want to be using, but Duas is going to be the default. Now, there is a port of Duas over the Linux called OpenDuas. This is mainly maintained by the Alpine Linux people, which they recommend as a replacement to sudo. And it's packaged on pretty much every distro out there, at least the distros that you're going to care about. So if you want to use that instead, that is an option. But as I said here, even though it's a much smaller application, it still has the main problem. It should also be said that sudo isn't just massive for no reason. Sudo is as big as it is because sudo provides a lot of functionality that the vast majority of people on Linux are never 
ever going to use. Most of the functionality is for like higher level server maintenance stuff, dealing with tons of people on the same system. It's not something that you're ever going to use if you have a user account and a root account. You're just not going to need it. I personally think the biggest problem with sudo is the fact that it's an SUID binary. The big attack surface, the plugins, network access, and so on come after it and just make the key problem worse, but are not in themselves the main issue with sudo. SUID processors are weird concepts. They're invoked by unprivileged code and inherit the execution context intended for and controlled by unprivileged code. By execution context, I mean the myriad of properties that a process has on Linux these days, from environment variables, process scheduling properties, C group assignments, security context, file descriptors passed, and so on and so on. A few of these settings, the kernel is nice enough to clean up automatically when an SUID binary is invoked, but much of it has to be cleaned up by the invoked SUID binary. This has to be done very, very carefully. And history has shown that SUID binaries are generally not good at that. So in my ideal world, we'd have an OS entirely without SUID. Let's throw out the concept of SUID on the dump of Unix bad ideas. But you obviously can't get rid of it without a replacement. With systemd version 256, we're going one step towards this. There's a new tool in systemd called run0. Or actually, it's not a new tool. It's actually the long existing tool systemd run. But when invoked under the run0 name via a symlink, it behaves a lot like a pseudo clone. Good reason for that, it makes it a lot easier to adopt. You don't want to have this whole weird custom interface that looks completely different from anything a user's already used. You want to go with something that people are already familiar with. Make it work like sudo, it's going to be easy to adopt. Like the ls clones and things like that. But with one key difference. It's not in fact SUID. Instead, just ask the service manager to invoke a command or shell under the target user's UID, it allocates a new PTY for that, and then shovels data back and forth from the originating TTY and this PTY. Or in other words, the target command is invoked in an isolated execution context, freshly forked off of PID1 without inheriting any context from the client. Well, middly, we do propagate the term variable, but that's an explicit exception, i.e. allow rather than deny. Or said in another another way, thanks to the low level and very early access of systemd, the command is started directly as the other user, not doing this weird privilege escalation thing that is prone to be exploited. Another kind of big difference is run0 doesn't implement a configuration language of its own, i.e. no equivalent of the sudoers file. Instead, it just uses polkit for that i.e. how we these days usually let unprivileged local clients be authorized by privileged servers. Now, most of you have probably never bothered looking into how PolicyKit or PolKit is actually configured. Now, the ArchWiki does have a bit of information on this. So, PolKit definitions are divided into two kinds. We have actions. These are defined in an XML policy file and then authorization rules are defined in JavaScript rules. As much as I really don't like the pseudo configuration file, I don't think XML is much better. Honestly, I think that everything based on HTML is garbage. That includes HTML. There are better ways to do it. This is terrible. Let's just leave it in the past where it belongs. As for the JavaScript stuff, some might argue why not like a Lua-based system, but... I think JavaScript is fine. In the replies to this, someone noted that Polkit is also extensible. Polkit is scriptable with JavaScript, so people can do any kind of stuff with it, of course, but I think it's much less problematic than what sudo is doing, because Polkit runs that stuff in a well-defined execution context, forked off of Polkit's service, which runs unprivileged, and not on the client side, in an icky, undefined, half-inherited mess of an execution context, under user control like sudo does it. By isolating the context and the resources of client and target, we remove some other classes of attack entirely. For example, this stuff. So this is a post from 2016. This allowed you to inject commands 
into other users through an exploit in the user variable. I recommend you go and check this out because it is a really, really dumb oversight. But enough about all that security blah blah. The tool is also a lot more fun to use than sudo. For example, by default it will tint your terminal background in a reddish tone while you're operating with elevated privileges. That is supposed to act as a friendly reminder that you haven't given up the privileges yet, and marks the output of all commands that ran with privileges appropriately. If you don't like this, you can easily turn it off with this option here. It also inserts a red dot, Unicode for the win, in the window title while you operate with privileges and drops it afterwards. Basically it gives you visual indication that you're doing something involving security. Imagine that. Imagine using the fact that you have a graphical display to show graphics of things that you're doing. <sighs> Now I should also mention this post here, because this was also making the rounds, this is by Hacker Fantastic. Lennart Pottering intends to replace sudo with systemd's run zero. Here's a quick proof of concept to demonstrate root permission hijacking by exploiting the fact systemd run, the basis of u80 zero slash run zero, the sudo replacer, creates a user owned PTY for communication with the new root process. This got a lot of attention. What didn't get a lot of attention is the reply that Lennart gave. Ah, uh, so your hack is that you can p-trace the run zero process that runs under your own UID. Or what am I missing? If you think being a debugger of your own process is a security hole, then maybe you're not that fantastic hacker you think you are. I mean, it's like complaining that you can extract the SSH private keys from your SSH client process if you p-trace slash gdb it, because Yes, you can do exactly that. Linux doesn't put a security boundary on ptrace. Now, Lennart went back and forth with this user a couple of times and basically thinks that everything he's saying is nonsense and he doesn't understand what he's doing. Now, I'll leave the post in the description down below if you want to check them out for yourself. Go ahead and do so. But it is definitely worth reading the original post along with Lennart's replies. Is this going to be a perfect solution with absolutely no bugs and absolutely no security holes that show up down the line. No, it's software. I don't know what to tell you. Is this going to be a solution that every single distro adopts? I don't know. I'm sure they're going to experiment with it and see what it's like and whether it really fits their needs and whether they feel like it makes sense to replace sudo, something that everybody on Linux understands how to use. But I am very curious to see how this ends up playing out. So let me know your thoughts down below. Do you think there needs to be a replacement to sudo? Do you think run zero would be that replacement? Or do you think something like do as makes a lot more sense? I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, sleep, bear, pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and... Run zero, run one, run two, run three, run four, run five, run six.